Hello, um, I'm Valentina Pasquale and I'm going to present uh, this work I did with Francesca Dumasi, which is called Mitlor. And in particular, I will present the storytelling part of the overall project. So, um, starting with some definition and some theoretical frameworks towards the overall work. Um, digital storytelling has its own part in the cultural heritage object life cycle and overall the, the whole process of data management is necessary and fundamental for the re-enhancement of materials and cultural objects. For example, with intuitive graphic systems, for example, GUIs, uh, thus uh, ensuring easy access even for non-domain experts for what concerns IT. So not necessarily domain experts working on collections are able to use, for, for example, Sparkle. So um, in the case of Mitlod, we decided to uh, build some visualization to help um, domain experts in accessing our data. So researchers in general uh, working on collection can benefit em enormously on visualizations often even uh, leading to the resolution of complex information management projects, uh, problems. So, um, Professor Tomasi in 2012 uh, defined six main steps in the curation of digital object life cycle, which was a theoretic framework we used in this project. So after producing the digital resource, after describing it, um, Resources are manipulated in the project, then archived, for example, ensuring long-term preservation, disclosed, for example, via a web app, and using and reusing existing technologies and data. So in the specific case of the storytelling, we implemented the phases where uh, the story storytelling has been thought and implemented are the manipulation phase, uh, coming with the analysis and interpretation of the data that has been encoded during the description, um, since data must be analyzed, interrogated, and then um, being capable to return some kind of knowledge, possibly returning the maximum of con cognitive power of the over overall data of the project. And, and in this phase, we define the storytelling, and in the dissemination and disclosure in part, we define and implemented the actual storytelling of the project. So, Mitro, uh, was born in 2020 and is actually the revalorization and repurposing of an existing database, a relational database called Mythologe. In general, Mythologe is a digital collection of visual artworks, museal art artworks, from different places, periods, artists, united by the mythological representation carried by each artwork. For example, this is one of the paintings stored in Mythologe, and for each painting, some uh, metadata has been recorded by the students and scholars working on the project. So first of all, we have a selection of descriptive general metadata, for example, title, author, description, uh, and even some categories uh, that actually represent the, the mythological scene depicted in, in, in the artwork. And finally, uh, a selection of literary sources, medieval, modern, classical, and uh, cinematographic uh, resources, which are stored in simple free text format here, as you can see. So the main work in Mitlod was to uh, collect this data, analyze this data, and trying to um, convert them in linked open data by cleaning and disambiguize all, uh, especially literary sources. So, a brief introduction on the workflow we adopted. First, we analyze the data stored in Mythologe. Uh, then we try to clean and disambiguate the data. Uh, we perform some entity linking, trying to get external resources, for example, geolocalization of places. Um, we built the, the real data set, so the, the Mythlo data set in linked open data format. And then we um, implemented a visualization of a catalog and the storytelling part. So the data set contains 4, 000, circa 4,000 artworks um, with 94 literary sources from at least uh, more or less 500 old institutions, more than 1,000 agents, and 134 recurring themes from mythological scenes or uh, characters. 
We also model and work on canonical citations in order to get also the lines of the citation present in the, in the data. And while methodology is constantly growing, Mitlod stores the data since June 2020. So this is a brief selection of the overall knowledge base we produced. And we implied a nano-publication and name graphs in order to separate the layers of analysis. So um, as, I told you, as I told before, the, um, the main problem in visualizing these kind of things and this kind of data is that they are strictly dependent to the model chosen. So we wanted to stress uh, the more as possible on the layers of interpretation performed by the scholars in, in the project. So we separated the, uh, the data from uh, mythology in several layers, and each layer is made as a name graph. So the first layer is the factual data storing all the information that are not really deemed to be questionable, and these data uh, are uh, defining artworks and literary sources, for example, title, keywords, uh, the website, or the topology. The second layer is the assertion, so it's the actual connection between the artwork and the literary sources. As you can see in the example, the enigma of the Sphinx, uh, which is a painting, represents the anonymous theme which appears in different literary sources stored in a knowledge base. The third layer is the provenance, so conveying also the information into the knowledge base of who did the claim, which kind of approach, and so on. And the publication information are the last uh, layer of the, <laughs> of the model, um, storing the information about who published the data, when, and uh, in, which in, in which institution. So we needed some graphical solution to express the overall knowledge base and the complexity we tried to encode uh, with the data model, especially because we wanted to use, since we were working with uh, non-IT specialists, we wanted to include them in the overall workflow of the, of the project, especially for testing purposes of the correctness and repre representativeness of the, of the database. So we thought about two main solutions, and the first one was the catalog, which is a web page where the user can create their own path through, um, through a faceted search system. Um, especially highlighting the four layer of analysis we used on the data. And the second one is the actual storytelling, trying to um, change our point of view from the museal collection, so the selection of artworks encoded in the knowledge base, and changing the point of view to the literary sources as the main subject of the storytelling. So for what concerns the, the catalog, we chose to, you, to uh, leave it as an open path uh, which can be customizable by a um, faceted search uh, that has a, a selection of filters, both referring to the visual artworks metadata, for example, the collocation, period of creation, or author, but also browsable from the point of view of the literary sources cited in the data, for example, uh, which are the references um, uh, um, linked to, to that particular artwork, or for example, the authors. So from the, um, from the catalog, it's, catalog it's actually possible to get all the, the artworks which somehow refers to an aid. But when we implemented the catalog, we noticed that actually not all of the art competency questions were fulfilled. So new questions emerged, even with the, with the domain expert, and we noticed that we had a lot of more questions on the data. For example, which are the themes shared across, in this specific case, with an aid, or which are the most cited lines of an aid in the collection, or is there an hidden connection between an aid and other literary sources cited in the data, and many others. So since this information cannot be displayed in a simple catalog, we chose to build the actual storytelling, which is a separate path in the overall website that can be browsable by domain experts. Uh, as the main guide to build a storytelling, we chose to, uh, we, we follow this Venn diagram using narrative visuals and data to explain, enlighten, and engage uh, the domain experts. So why an aid? Why we chose just one single case study? Because we focused in the data modeling activity on canonical citation to the complete encoding of canonical citation and classical literary sources. And actually, the most classical, uh, the most cited classical sources in the collection are NAID, Odyssey, and 
as you can see, the third one, Medea, is just cited 28 times. So we decided to use an aid for a frequency matter. And even because 29 teams uh, of, um, used to categorize the, um, the artworks are actually belonging even to an aid. For example, this shows up, I think, how networks are really simple to be navigated from one direction to another, for example, from the point of view of the visual artworks or from the point of view of literary sources. And even, we, we didn't really uh, dive into the, um, the categories, but actually another access of point of view to the collection would be also from the categories. For example, the figure of Polyphemus seems really interesting since has been cited in, by many authors from literary sources like Homer, Euripides, or, uh, Ovid, and so on. So the data storytelling starts with an introduction to give the user some contextual information about the project and the storytelling. And we focused on four main aspects. The first one is the what dimension. So we wanted to give some insights on art of themes and literary sources. The when dimension, so um, artworks dates of production, so which is the, the time span in which the, the artworks has been made, where with the spatial coordinate visualized in a map, and who, so some space even to the authors of the, uh, to the artists. So we try to simplify a bit um, the, um, the contents and we wanted to highlight only the relevant information uh, decided with the main experts for the testing purposes and even for the visualizations. And we provided some tips as brief description for each visualization and when possible even the research, qu the competency question we designed when uh, building up the model. So for example, for the when dimension, we um, built a timeline, which is from Nightlife. And this timeline, uh, answers to the question, which are the musical objects which share some theme in common with an ace and when, have them, when they have been created. And for example, uh, the, the timeline shows that the time span is very wide, like it, mm, it covers a wide um, time span. But on the other end, the mostly uh, the most of the artworks uh, which falls in this category are actually mm, from uh, uh, 16th century to the 20th. For the where dimension, we align to Wikidata to get spatial coordinates of all the, all the institutions of the artwork we were interested in, and we build a cluster map in order to um, visualize all the, um, uh, all the artworks which has some theme in common with the NACE on the map. And as you can see, actually, the whole collection and even this sub-collection sub is very Western-oriented. Um, and of course, by clicking on the clusters, you can uh, have a preview of the, of the item and the collocation. For the word dimension, which was the most interesting one, we, uh, since we uh, modeled the canonical citations, we were able to represent in a heat map uh, all the lines and books from an aid and looking at uh, which are the most cited lines and categories in, uh, in the, um, the Mitlod catalog. And then we also perform some semantic and, con and content analysis for the, in this case with some bar charts and a TAC cloud uh, in order to see which is the vocabulary associated with an aid. With an aid. And finally, we draw a um, um, a graph um, which has some clusters, the colors represent the clusters of similarity and uh, how much uh, different literary sources co-occur uh, with the NAIS into the data set. And this is interesting because we noticed that uh, Triumphi by Francesco Petrarca, Vita di un uomo by Giuseppe Ungaretti, Divino Commedia by Dante Alighieri and uh, Canti di, uh, by Giacomo Leopardi are really interconnected, they share a lot of themes with an A's, and they are, as you can see, with the color, which is actually in pink. I, I don't know if you can see it, but they belong to the same cluster since they are really interconnected. And the last dimension was the who dimension for art, art or creators. And in this case, we wanted to see uh, which were the categories, which are the biggest uh, dots you can see. 
and um, how many authors contributed to each of the categories in the overall data set, especially for it was interesting to analyze which were the artists that uh, contributed to more than one conceptual categories on an aid. So in this case, digital storytelling design is part of the data management process since first is part of the dissemination uh, phase of the project, but also for testing purposes because the, it helped us to communicate with our um, expert domain, uh, domain experts, even spotting some problems uh, and data model errors, for example, in, in the data set. Visualizations are strictly dependent from the data, so they have been highly customized over our uh, data model and the peculiarities of this data set. It can be explicitly, um, explicitly show latent knowledge in the data, since, for example, with the catalog, it was not possible to perform this kind of analysis. And creativity and engagement are key terms in digital storytelling, especially for the general public and for the dissemination processes. So the data storytelling needs clean and enriched data in order to be performed, for sure. So entity linking is key. When, you, when we come to um, digital collection, and for example, geolocalization. And finally, digital cultural heritage collection can be explored with different narratives in order to discover new connection among artworks and possibly new knowledge for domain experts and the general public. Well, this is the references, and thank you so much. <laughs>